Hi everyone, welcome back to the Murder Tapes podcast, episode 7. I just got back from New Orleans. I mentioned in the last episode that I was going to go to the Sugar Bowl, and it was so much fun even though UT lost. I'm still very sad about that. But we also got to go to the Sugar Bowl parade, which was nice, and there was a ton of little cool shops that we got to shop at. So Wilson and I also went to the casino for the first time and sadly lost $20. I just want to put it out there that it's not at all like the movies where you pull down the little lever thing. There's like seven or eight buttons that are so confusing, the rules make no sense. Anyways, yeah, so that's how the weekend went, but coincidentally, I was also working on this episode at our Airbnb when Gypsy Rose was released, and so she was in Louisiana at the same time as I was, and that's where she's from. So let's get into the case. Gypsy Rose Blanchard was born in Golden Meadow, Louisiana in 1991 to Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard and Rod Blanchard. Him and Dee Dee met at a bowling alley, and not too long after they began dating, she got pregnant. He mentions that his family made it clear that if he got someone pregnant, he had to marry them. So that's exactly what he did. They got married when he was just 17 years old, and the following year, on his 18th birthday, he recalls asking himself why he was married to her. He remembers her being into witchcraft and other dark things that made him uncomfortable. He quickly divorced her, and Dee Dee made it hard for him to see their daughter, Gypsy. This was because her mother had Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which is a condition that causes someone to make up or induce illnesses in people they care for, such as an elderly parent or child. This is done in order to get sympathy and attention from others, and in this case, media coverage and donations were a big form of attention her mother received. It's important to note that this is a form of child abuse. When Gypsy was born, her mother Dee Dee claimed that she had sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a disorder that causes your breathing to stop and start again randomly. This can prevent someone from getting a healthy amount of sleep. It can also lead to other complications such as heart failure, coronary artery disease, strokes, etc. Then, when she was just 8 years old, her mom said she was suffering from leukemia and muscular dystrophy. Dee Dee told doctors that Gypsy needed both a wheelchair and a feeding tube and even went as far as shaving her head to make sure everyone believed that she had cancer. She would also later give doctors a list of conditions that she stated Gypsy had. This list included epilepsy, vision impairment, hearing impairment, GI reflux, quadriplegia, anemia, hypoventilation, asthma, allergies, mild mental retardation, lung disease, and a heart murmur. This list led doctors to perform medical procedures on her that she didn't need, including the removal of her salivary glands, an eye surgery, and gastrointestinal operations. This also led doctors to prescribe lots of medication she didn't need. Now you're probably wondering how her mother got doctors to believe this without proof of medical history. Well, Gypsy and Dee Dee were hit by Hurricane Katrina, which gave her the advantage because she was able to lie and say all of Gypsy's medical history was destroyed, and any time a doctor would question her, she wouldn't return. It's important to mention that these doctors still should have taken the extra step to verify her conditions before giving her medication or performing surgical procedures. If they would have taken the extra steps, it would have shown that Gypsy was healthy and could have possibly gotten Dee Dee in trouble. Instead, Gypsy would be controlled for the majority of her childhood. After their home in Citadel, Louisiana was destroyed by the hurricane, they moved to Springfield, Missouri when Gypsy was just 14 years old. There are lots of home videos showing her and her mother laughing and talking about the things they're doing that day. As I mentioned earlier, Dee Dee was given lots of media coverage because the world saw her as an amazing, hardworking mother. How was this mom able to be so happy and loving when her daughter had all of these horrible conditions? The world was intrigued by their story. They would also become local celebrities. In fact, their new home was built by Habitat for Humanity, an organization that builds affordable homes for low-income families. They would often fly across the country to attend galas, theme parks, concerts, celebrity meet and greets, etc. Gypsy was also receiving donations from her community, organizations, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Because all of the financial support along with social security, disability checks, and food stamps, her mother didn't have to work. She also didn't have to pay for any of her medical expenses because her Medicaid covered it all. Gypsy would later say in interviews that she particularly loved going to Disneyland because it was all a fantasy world. She felt a connection to the character 
Rapunzel in the film Tangled. If you're not aware of the movie, it is a movie in which the princess Rapunzel is trapped in a tower by an older lady because her bright blonde hair keeps her young. Later on, her boyfriend Eugene, the prince, cuts her hair with a mirror, and this leads it to change color, killing its magical powers, meaning the older woman cannot use it anymore, and she begins to age rapidly. It's interesting that this movie is very similar to Gypsy's story, in the way that she's locked in her mom's house and used for something. Then, in her eyes, her Prince Charming comes to save her. Gypsy became curious about the outside world, but her mom would shut down every opportunity she had. She would destroy Gypsy's laptop, chain her to the bed, and put bells on the doors in order to keep her at their house and away from boys after an attempt to run away with a man that she met from a convention. She recounts the night she tried to run away, claiming her mom found her after just four hours. Her mom then threatened to call the cops on the man and, as mentioned earlier, smashed her computer and phone with a hammer. After some time, Gypsy decided to take matters into her own hands. While her mom was sleeping, she signed up for a Christian dating website where she met Nicholas Gojon, a man from Big Bend, Wisconsin. They fell in love and developed a relationship over the next two and a half years. Gypsy would post things on Facebook involving their relationship. One of the posts read, Is it wrong to start thinking about your wedding before you're engaged? To which Nicholas replied, No, darling, because that is when you know you are truly in love. Another post would read, I have a wonderful man my Nicholas, who gives me hope and strength and support and whose love is that of a fairy tale Prince Charming. Nicholas didn't mingle often according to his parents. He was also diagnosed with autism. While lots of people are blaming his autism for what occurs, it's important to note that there is no strong link between autism and criminal behavior. Yes, there are cases of people with autism that murder others, but it isn't common for them to only have autism. In fact, two psychologists would testify that he not only had autism spectrum disorder, but also possibly multiple personality disorder, which is now named dissociative identity disorder. DID is when you have two or more separate personalities that control your behavior at certain times. It can also mess with your memory and cause other issues. Some triggers for DID are stress, strong emotions, specific situations, alcohol, and substance abuse, along with memories. Nicholas also didn't have the best childhood and was often isolated. Not too long after they began their relationship, Nicholas brought up BDSM, which stands for bondage, discipline or domination, sadism or submission, and masochism, which is a sexual activity that involves someone tying up their partner, a partner controlling the other, or giving and receiving pain for pleasure. Role play is a big factor, so much so that he made Gypsy make characters for him that she would play on different occasions. While her mother was sleeping, she would dress up in various costumes and wigs to take pictures and send to him. These photos were explicit and contained texts proving his control over her. In another Facebook post, Gypsy would write that her and Nicholas would die for each other, kill for each other, and do anything else because they were in love. She wasn't aware that he actually had a dark past. He had been on the news after he was arrested for watching porn in a McDonald's and fondling himself for nine hours. Poliso also found a large knife on him. Nicholas and Gypsy finally decided to meet in March of 2015 for the very first time at a movie theater in Springfield, Missouri. Gypsy and her mom were going together to see Cinderella, but Gypsy decided to get Nicholas a ticket in order to see him. She wasn't able to tell her mom that she would meet them because she would ask how they met and how she communicated with him. Gypsy dressed up as Cinderella and Nicholas dressed up as Prince Charming. And then they had sex in the movie theater handicapped bathroom without the mom knowing. Later, when they watched the movie, her mom told her she didn't like him at all. In her eyes, he was weird for going to see Cinderella by himself, dressed up as Prince Charming. After Gypsy's plan to convince her mom to let her date Nicholas failed, she texted him that she was 100,000% in. She then said, I'm ready, truly. To which he responded, why do you say that, baby? Gypsy would then say, because I've finally allowed myself to accept that you're my everything. I will go with you and live our dream. Gypsy then gave him money for the Greyhound bus in order to meet her at her house. When he got off the bus, he messaged her that he was in Springfield, and the next day, her and her mother had spent the whole day together. They painted each other's nails after they had gotten into an argument, and Gypsy would recall her mother's last words being, don't hurt me, 
because when they argued, she would get sad. This is very chilling considering what happens next. Once her mom fell asleep, Gypsy messaged Nicholas and said, I left the gloves outside the front door, and the screen door is squeaky, so try to open it just enough to get in and close it gently. I'll hand you the knife and duct tape inside, darling. I'm doing my nails too. I'm painting them a dark pink. Nicholas responded saying, I'm here, and you get your ass to the bathroom. You open the door. She would reply saying, yes, sir. I'm going now, sir. She then got into a fetal position and began to cover her ears. She then heard her mom wake up and call her name multiple times. She also screamed and cried for help. Dee Dee had been brutally stabbed 17 times in her back. According to Gypsy, he wanted to rape her mother after murdering her. She told him to rape her instead. So right after the murder, him and Gypsy had sex in Gypsy's room. Nicholas would say it was consensual during his interrogation, but the photos of her would prove otherwise. Gypsy had bite marks that were bruised along with other marks on her neck and arms. She would later say she screamed at him to stop, but he wouldn't. They then stole $4,000 from her mother and took a taxi to a hotel. There's a video Gypsy filmed of him naked in the hotel room, and I'm going to play the audio for you. Uh, <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> Not too long after, they went back to Wisconsin in a Greyhound bus. Gypsy would testify that she didn't think about her mom being dead. She was just happy to have successfully escaped her own prison. She was walking and living life like everyone else. Their next plan was to have their own little family in Milwaukee. Gypsy was then introduced to Nicholas's family. They found her to be odd because she wore a cosplay wig when they first met her, but they decided to let her live with them. His parents were told she was left in a homeless shelter before meeting him. Interestingly enough, they received a package in the mail. The package would contain the murder weapon. The knife Nicholas used on Dee Dee was mailed to his parents in order for him to hide it. Then, strangely, Gypsy would post on her mom's Facebook account. She wrote, that bitch is dead. And then, in the same post, commented, I fucking slashed that fat pig and raped her sweet innocent daughter. Her scream was so fucking loud, lol. To which Dee Dee's friends replied concerned and soon called police. Gypsy would later admit that the reason she posted that on her mom's Facebook was so that her friends would contact the police, but there is lots of speculation that she did it for her own pleasure. Dee Dee's family friends, Kim and David, rushed to their home after seeing the post and said no one answered the door for them. They immediately called the police. David noticed that the kitchen window was unlocked and crawled into the home. Everything seemed to be normal until he stumbled across Gypsy's three wheelchair. They had never seen Gypsy out of her wheelchair, so they grew concerned. Later that same night, police found Dee Dee. They were soon caught because the post was traced to Nicholas home. When asked about how she felt about her mom's death, Gypsy would reply that she wishes she could take it all back. She would much rather her mom be in prison than dead. She also said she was both excited and overwhelmed about her new life. Quote, it would come in times of happiness, little spurts of happiness, but I would have breakdowns or I'd start crying, feeling remorse, guilt, and at the same time, also missing her at the same time. Worry about what? What I just done? She's gone. In Nicholas's eyes, he was simply defending his girlfriend. He even claimed he never would have done it if Gypsy hadn't asked him to. In court, everyone was shocked to hear that a young, supposed paraplegic suffering from muscular dystrophy, epilepsy, leukemia, and confined to a wheelchair was arrested and charged with the murder of her mother. Nicholas was also arrested and charged with first-degree murder. They both pleaded not guilty. Public defender Mike Stanfield would testify that Dee Dee had lots of medicine in their linen closet. He said, quote, The organization of the medications, that's what was shocking to me, because in every other area of Dee Dee's life, Life, it appeared that she had no organization or cleanliness except when it came to these medications. It let me know from the very beginning that something here was seriously wrong. Not only could Gypsy walk, but she also didn't have any of the conditions her mom stated she had. Gypsy admitted that she knew she could walk, but her mother convinced her time and time again that she needed a wheelchair. She wouldn't even let her walk in their own house. 
Gypsy would later say, quote, I was so young, so me looking up to her so much and just believing she knows the best. I didn't question it. It's sad because I think about all the times that I could have been walking around like a normal person, skating, riding bikes and stuff, and I've never done any of that. There were also documents taken from the house that included a fake birth certificate in order to make Gypsy seem younger than what she was. Her birth year was 1991, but her mom switched it to 1995. She would recall asking her mom how old she was multiple times, but she would only get yelled at instead of given an answer. Gypsy was seen and treated by more than 150 doctors. During her appointments, she would play with her stuffed animal or doll and her mom would talk to the doctor. She recalled her mom saying to not talk and that they'll do something fun after. After her dad was notified about the situation, he immediately scheduled a time to see Gypsy and talk to her. He believed that she was innocent and he felt horrible that he let her mom get in the way of them having a relationship all of those years ago. He began seeing her regularly. Gypsy eventually pleaded guilty to second degree murder in July of 2016. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Fast forward to eight years later, she has now been released from Chillicothe Correctional Center in Missouri at 3.30 a.m. Gypsy would say, I'm ready to expand and I think that goes for every facet of my life. She would also say, quote, she didn't deserve that. She was a sick woman and unfortunately I wasn't educated enough to see that. She deserved to be where I am, sitting in prison doing time for criminal behavior. Nicholas was sentenced to life in prison without parole in 2019. They have since separated and she is now married to Ryan Anderson. He's a teacher in Louisiana. Gypsy would say that she doesn't hate Nicholas, but she does feel sorry for him and she doesn't get how someone could do something so heartless to someone and not express remorse. She also felt that Nicholas and her mom were similar in the way that they loved to control her. Dee Dee's family would mention in an interview that she had it coming, whether it be from Gypsy or someone else she messed with. Her nephew, Bobby, would call her an evil person and say that he thought she had multiple personality disorder. He also mentioned that she would open up credit cards in his dad and grandfather's name. Dee Dee's father, Claude, would say that they were close in her childhood. He would do anything for her, but as she got older, her dad and stepmom, Laura, would see a big difference. Dee Dee was writing bad checks all over Louisiana. The worst part of it all is that Dee Dee poisoned her stepmom, Laura's food. Luckily, she didn't have any serious complications from this, but it could have escalated into something serious. Her dad mentioned that Dee Dee's mom, Emma, was just like her. She shoplifted and would often steal people's clothes from the washateria, along with money from family. Dee Dee took care of her mother a little while before she died, and it is rumored that she may have had something to do with her death. Family members recall Dee Dee not changing her mom or feeding her in the last days of her life. They believe she is truly evil. The family would later say that no one wanted Dee Dee's ashes, not even her own parents. Instead, they flushed her remains down the toilet. As for Gypsy's current life, she is working towards getting her GED, promoting her ebook, Conversations on the Eve of Freedom, along with her show, The Prison confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I would love to hear what you guys think about this case. I've seen so many social media posts about this and it's insane how much information is coming out. I couldn't imagine being in her situation and undergoing all of these painful surgeries only to find out I'm perfectly healthy. I'm also really close with my mom, so trying to imagine her doing something like this to me is heartbreaking to think about. Feel free to leave your thoughts on our Instagram post at Murder Tapes Podcast, and you can also follow my personal Instagram at Annalisa if you'd like. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, all evidence will be linked in the show notes. I hope to see you on the next one.